Hey there, you guys, Brew Krebs here in Atlanta, Georgia with your national real estate market update with a little bit of data from the local market. But today I'm gonna to be focusing on what's going on in the national real estate market with data from the National Association of Realtors, the National Association of Home Builders, Zillow, Realtor.com, Freddie Mac, and some data from our local MLS. So be sure that you stay tuned to the end to get the most information to help you with your real estate decisions because I'm gonna be covering a lot of stuff today. And if you do have any questions, please be sure that you comment those below the video and I'd be more than happy to get you the answers. Without further ado, I'm going to jump into the data. And if you haven't already, please be sure that you subscribe to my channel and click that little bell button to be notified when new videos come out because I do have videos coming out all the time on market data, new homes that are on the market, uh, what's going on with resales, uh, what's going on in Atlanta, uh, restaurant reviews, and so much more. But without further ado, what I want to do is I want to pop in here and I want to look at what's the information we're getting right now from the National Association of Realtors. Uh, and this is from our most recent market update. Uh, uh, basically the highlights from the profile of home buyers and sellers. Uh, you know, for right for most home buyers, the purchase of real estate is the most important and biggest financial purchase they make in their lifetime. So it's important that you are well informed and you understand what's going on in the marketplace to, uh, to know what is best for you. And like I say, be sure that you stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to cover a lot of stuff here. And if you do have any questions, don't forget to ask me about those. Now, flipping into who are buying homes. Our first time home buyers right now made up 26% of buyers altogether. Now that is down from 34% just last year. This is the lowest share of first time home buyers since the data collection begins. And that is from the National Association of Realtors. Um, your typical first time home buyer is 36 and your typical repeat buyer climbed to 59 years old. Both of those are getting to be a little bit older ages before they're making those purchases. 61% of buyers were married couples and 17% were single females while 9% were single males and 10% were unmarried. This is the highest share of unmarried couples recorded in the history of the recordation. Now, 14% of home buyers purchase multi-generational homes. That means that their parents move in with them or their kids move back in with the parents. Um, and what we're seeing that is because they're uh, moving back home and they're doing it for cost savings. 88% of buyers were white Caucasian. 8% were Hispanic Latino. And 3% were black African American. 2% were Asian Pacific Islanders and 3% identified as other. Now, 91% of recent home buyers identified as heterosexual, 2% as gay or lesbian, 2% as bisexual, and 5% preferred not to answer. At 22%, the primary reason for purchasing a home was that desire to own their own home. And for first time home buyers, that jumped to 62%. Now, let's look at what Zillow is saying about what's going on out there in the marketplace. Zillow is one of the largest data collectors in the world, so we do like to look at what they're saying. And they're looking at inventories right now being up 1.8% since October of 2021. There's no surprise there. We've seen that all across the marketplace. Um, but it does remain below pre-pandemic norms, now down 36% from 2019. That still means we have a very short supply of inventory out there in the marketplace. Now the typical home is worth in the United States right now, $358,458. Um, now that's not what the median list price is, but that's what people who own their home, that's what it is typically worth today across all the United States markets. Now that means that they are up 12% since October of 2021. So that means rate prices or home values have continued to increase even though those inventories have, have uh, increased themselves as well. The typical home values held steady this month but are up 43% since before the pandemic. The largest, the markets with the largest decreases in home values were Las Vegas, Austin, Texas, and Raleigh, North Carolina. 
Now, let's flip on to the National Association of Home Builders and see what they're saying about what's going on in the marketplace. This is from the National Association of Home Builders Chief Economist, Robert Dietz. And what he's saying is rate, mortgage interest rates have stabilized in re recent weeks. You know, as the bond market deals with the expectation, expectation of tighter mon monetary policy from the Fed, uh, these have basically uh, stabilized the interest rate market just a little bit. The rising pocket possibility of broader macroeconomic slowdown would ultimately lead rates to level off and eventually decline. According to Freddie Mac, the average 30-year fixed rate for the week of November the 23rd stood at 6.58%. And as we get a little further along, I'm going to show you what they are today, and you'll see that they've declined just a little bit further since uh, November the 23rd. But as a result of that, October's newly built single family homes registered at 632,000. That's a seasonally adjusted pace, which is seven, a 7.5% 7 monthly increase and is 5.8% below that of October the 2020, 2021. Uh, but the census data doesn't include those canceled sales. And what we're seeing now is those are likely running about 25%. Last year, about this time, and I think it was October of 2021, uh, we saw those rates about 9%. So instead of 9% falling out of the sale, once they go into contract, 25% of them. So that's a pretty big change there in properties that are going under contract and then not actually closing. Uh, regardless of the pace, the sale ha sales has slowed significantly, as evidenced by the fact that completed, ready to occupied inventory is rising while the inventory of homes not started is falling in response to weaker demand. The long run trend for housing demand is reflected in the existing home sales, which fell 5.9% in October to a seasonally adjusted annual rate of 4.43 million, according to the National Association of Realtors. This was the lowest pace since December of 2011. So, this is the slowest sale pace we've seen since we came out of that big recession that we saw between 2007 and 2011. That is, of course, without the exception of April and May of 2020. And if you remember, that's when we dove into the pandemic and everybody was locked up into their homes for at least 60 days. And then, of course, at that point, we did see a tremendous drop off in sales. On a year over year basis, though, sales were down 28.4%. The pullback in housing demand is now causing home prices to fall. Uh, we saw a seasonally adjusted annual growth rate of 8.7% in September. Now, this is the third consecutive monthly decline. Nonetheless, national home prices are now 62.4% higher than their last peak during the March, uh, the housing boom in March 2006. Now remember, in March 2006, we also had, saw a tremendous amount of inventory, and that's what caused that crash that we saw going into 2007. We d between 2007 and 10, we saw some homes taking two and three years to sell. We are not seeing that today, and prices continue to decline going into 2023, though because of that lower. Uh, Traffic, those lower traffic numbers. Now, we're going to flip on in here to realtor.com and see what those folks are saying. And this is the inventory core metrics data state by state. I'm also going to show you what's going on nationally here as well. But I want to point out that our two most, ex or our three most expensive markets in this country are California. Massachusetts and Hawaii with California or with Hawaii being the most expensive at $843,785. California coming in number 2 here at $699,900 so almost 700 grand and then Massachusetts coming in a bold third with their average home price at $669,500. What is interesting to see if you look over here though at our days on market on the right side of this chart is that most of your home sales are running right about 60 days. You know, somewhere between 60 and 90 days is the average days on market right now. Um, and depending on your state and the demand, of course, those vary just a little bit. And of course, if it's a metro area that's in high demand, it may sell a little bit faster than a rural area where you don't have as many people moving into it. Now, looking at the lowest price markets in the country, Ohio, Michigan, and West Virginia, with West Virginia being the lowest priced home market in the country with the average list price at $221,975. 
followed shortly there behind with Ohio at 224,950 and Michigan at 250,400. Now here in the state of Georgia, we see our average sale list price at $385,000 and that typical days on market right there around 53 days. Now if we look at this on a national basis, uh, we see that the median list price nationally, this is across all of the United States, 50 states, is $415,047.51, where the typical days on market is 57.53 days, so right around that two month mark. Uh, that's fairly statistically accurate across the country. Uh, obviously, every market is different. And if you do have questions specifically about your property, your market, or what's going on, please don't hesitate to reach out to me and ask those. Um, I'm more than happy to get you the answers on those. That is what I'm here for. I love being your real Atlanta real estate expert. And you can always comment those below, text me or call me, and I'm happy to get you that data. Now, without further ado, let's do flip on to the Freddie Mac report. And this is from yesterday, December the 8th, 2022. And we can see here that mortgage rates decreased for the fourth consecutive week. Uh, this is due to increasing concerns over lack, lack, lackluster economic growth. You know, over the last four re, uh, weeks, we've seen those mortgage rates decline three quarters of a point, and that is the largest decline we've seen since 2008. Now, while the decline rate has been large, home buyer sentiment remains low with no positive reaction in the purchase of these uh, related to these lower rates. rates. <coughs> now, if we look at what's going on with the rates specifically, you look at your average rate for a 30-year fix right now is 6.33%, where your 15-year uh, fixed rate mortgage is about a 5.67%. And if you look here at our chart, we know this, I think we all experienced it at the end of last year, we were seeing rates around that 3.1%, and we've seen them increase all up into the year until about four weeks ago, where they kind of hit their high right there. Um, at 7.8%, 7.08%. And then over the last four weeks, we've since continued to see those tick down and now they're at 6.33%. So almost a percent less in the last month. That means that those home prices, while they're lesser, so are those interest rates. It's really a pretty good time for buyers. There's a, there's a good bit of inventory. We're not seeing that multiple offer bidding situation and those throwing prices up over you know $50,000 over the list price. And if you think about it, really, if you paid $50,000 over list price, which is what we saw people doing in May and April, uh, May, April, May and June, uh, you actually paid a tremendous amount more than you would if you were paying even a 7% interest rate versus a 4% interest rate. That is a tremendously larger number. So right now, even though rates are higher, they're only about 6.33%, home prices are so much lower that you're getting so much more home for the money. You know, there are also some great techniques to lower those payments right now. You know, we're seeing a lot of folks do two-in-one buy-downs. So basically what that does is it buys your rate down for the first few years. And some folks are paying around 4.3% right now if they're doing those rate downs, uh, rate buy-downs. And then of course, in, in the next second year, it'd be 5.3. And then in the third year, it'd be 6.03. And it is widely expected that those interest rates will continue to tick down and probably see a lower rate. Now keep in mind, as rates do tick down, you'll probably see those prices start to go back up just a little bit because people will be a little bit more confident in buying. Um, what I'm seeing a lot of folks do is they're buying their homes now because they're getting them really, really cheap. They're doing those rate buy downs with the because it's widely expected that in 2024, we're gonna see um, a good bit lower rates and then they refinance those homes in 2024. They capitalize on that low price and then they continue to see that equity grow up or build up. So they're making money those two years with the lower payments and then they refinance and, and put themselves in a really great position. Plus they get the home that they want right now. So for buyers, it's a great time in the marketplace. Uh, sellers, sorry, you're not getting those $50,000 bonuses like you used to, but really it's a healthy thing for the marketplace. So without further ado, I am going to flip into the uh, local market. This is the FMLS market data. And this is basically um, Metro Atlanta a little bit further out. Um, FMLS carries, covers mostly the Metro Atlanta and, and does carry some out or cover some outlying areas. Um, but it gives you a really good idea of what's going on locally here in the marketplace. And what we're seeing is that new listings in the last seven days are 5,160. We see 1,602 back on the market. Now remember, we talked a little bit about home sales falling out at about 25% on the builder side. So if 5,170 went under contract and 1,602 came back on the market, that's a very similar number to what those new home sales are seeing. We're seeing about 25% of those sales 
fall out after they go under contract. We're also seeing a lot of them reduce their prices. Look there at that number right there. 6,407 in the last seven days in the FMLS market data reduce their prices. We have not seen price reductions like that in a very, very long time. Uh, this is a great opportunity for buyers. Um, you're buying homes at much cheaper prices than you were eight or nine months ago. Remember, real estate is a long game, so you know uh, you want to buy and hold your real estate for a few years before you sell it, unless you're doing something like a fix and flip. And if you do have questions, maybe what's better for you, um, please don't hesitate to call me or and ask me about those. I'm always happy to give you details on what I see in the marketplace and 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 help you make your best decisions. Now. The local supply is very similar to what we've seen nationally. It has ticked up and ticked up and ticked up. We're seeing it at about 2.4 months worth of inventory in the entire MLS area here at the end of November. Similarly, we have seen those sales drop, 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 drop. So more homes coming on the market, sales slowing down. That means a bigger supply, right? That makes a, to a lot of sense, right? And as we see that supply to uh, continue to get uh, to be more, what we're also seeing is those days on market are, are ticking up and being longer. It's becoming more of a normal market. You know, normal market is when we have six months worth of inventory. What we've seen historically in the last couple of years, just not realistic. I mean, it's not something we could have sustained. And yes, had we continued with those low rates and you know homes going crazy, we probably would have had a bubble bust. We are not expecting that. We're not seeing that. We're not seeing any of the signs of what would create a bubble bust in the marketplace. Where what we're seeing is the market is becoming healthy and strong, and we're going to we expect to see prices continue to uh, appreciate over the years to come at more moderate rates, of course, than we saw over the last two years, but still at good rates. Uh, outpacing what you're paying in interest rates, and you gotta have a place to live. I mean, if you're renting, let's face it, you're paying 100% interest. Um, so it's still a very, very viable and safe investment. I know if anybody's looking at their stock portfolios right now, you certainly can't say the same thing about those. Um, I know mine, I think, has gone down like 35% in the last year, not fun, uh, while my home values have continued to increase. And we're seeing that across the marketplace. Now we have seen, since we saw that high back in June, where things were selling for those $50,000 over market uh, price, and then we saw it started to see those interest rates tick up. We started to see those prices sort of uh, drop back down a little bit. Our median sales price in June in Atlanta was $395,000, while our median sales price here in November is $358,118. Like I say, you combine that with those rate buy downs, you're getting a lot more home for a tremendous amount less money. Not only in the starting price, but also, you know, if you're buying those interest rate down, your payment's going to be way down. Ride that up for a couple of years, um, and then refinance your home when rates are back in the you know fives and so rate, which was kind of what we expect them to be. Um, you'll be you'll be very glad that you did. It's a very healthy marketplace. It is a wonderful time to be in real estate, even though it feels a little freaky out there. Um, and I know it can be very very confusing. And like I say, as always. You know, I do get calls from folks all around the metro Atlanta, especially in town. That's anything inside the perimeter like Buckhead, Midtown, Old Fourth Ward, Inman Park, Virginia Highlands, West Midtown, Decatur, all of these areas. Um, and, and if you do have questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to do that. I really do love being your Atlanta real estate expert. Um, you know, I'm also putting out videos with this information all the time. So if you haven't already, please be sure that you subscribe to my channel and click that little bell button to be notified when those new videos come out. Um, I love connecting with you. So please, anytime you see me out, say hello. Um, I'd love to uh, see what's going on in your life. And if you do have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me about those. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in today. I really greatly appreciate you. And if you did like this video, I know you're going to love the next one that pops up on your screen.